فعاش القلب إخلاصا وصرت تحومك الطير تحلق في ثقافات وتنهل من روبا الخير الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله وأعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه وخليله وخيرته من خلقه صلوات ربي وسلامه عليه وعلى الآل والصحب الكرام أما بعد فاتقوا الله عباد الله واتقوا يوما ترجعون فيه إلى الله ثم توفى كل نفس ما كسبت وهم لا يظلمون عباد الله اتقوا الله حق تقاته كما قال الله عز وجل يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته My beloved brothers and sisters in Islam The first piece of advice that I give myself and yourselves Is to be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala To fear Allah at all times For indeed the one who gave you life is the one who shall take your life away and the one whom we were with, we shall return to him. And when we return to him, those who remain behind generally say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. It means indeed we all belong unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we shall all be returned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and sisters, I would like to remind yourselves that your time on earth is very limited. The Prophet ﷺ has instructed us regarding being dutiful unto our Maker who made us because when we return to Him, it is only Him who will be able to have mercy upon us. On earth, you might have your mother who has mercy on you, your father who may be merciful upon you. You might have those who love you, those family members and friends who are merciful upon you. But trust me, when we pass away and we are in our graves, we will only have our good deeds to be there for us by the mercy of Allah and Allah alone. May Allah make our time in the grave easy. Amen. My brothers and sisters, the Prophet ﷺ speaks of the average lifespan of a human being. And he says, A'maru ummati. مَا بَيْنَ السِّتِّينَ إِلَى السَّبْعِينَ The average lifespan of the members of my ummah between 60 and 70 years, which means there is no guarantee that we will live up to 60 or 70 because when we speak of an average, there will be those who pass away before and we have seen them. And there may be those who are granted a bonus whereby they live beyond that particular age for a few years for specific reasons, may Allah make it easy for every one of us. So who is the winner? The winner is not the one who lives for many years on earth, nor is the winner the one who doesn't live much in this troubled earth. The winner is the one who passes away in a condition that Allah is pleased with him. This is why we say, وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ Make sure that you don't die except in the condition of submission unto Allah. One might argue, I don't know when I'm going to die. So how can I make sure that I'm going to die in the submission of Allah? The answer is very simple. Yes, none of us knows when we are going to die. Therefore, make sure that you are always a submitter unto Allah. You will never lose. My brothers and sisters, we are human beings. Sometimes we commit sins, sometimes we make mistakes, sometimes we do things that we know are wrong. We do that which we know will displease our maker. But the mercy of the most merciful is such that wallahi, wallahi, he has taught us a way to clean our slate every single day. Just like a school teacher who writes on the blackboard or the whiteboard, what happens is after they have expressed or explained or taught a concept, they will erase what is on the board and make it clean once again in order to put something of a higher level on that particular board. 
when it comes to us with our sins, Wallahi, we have been taught to wipe whatever we have done out and it will become cleaner than that blackboard or the whiteboard. Remember my brothers and sisters, At-ta'ibu min al-dhambi kamalla dhambala. The one who seeks forgiveness from a sin is equivalent to he or she who has not committed the sin. If you have transgressed against Allah, I invite you today to seek the forgiveness of Allah. If you have been involved in adultery, fornication, I invite you today to seek the forgiveness of Allah, to change your life. That is not going to help you. The evil ways and habits will not help you. You might achieve temporary pleasure, but long term it is definitely very destructive for you and I. May Allah forgive our shortcomings. Brothers and sisters, if you have been involved in intoxicants, if you have been involved in drugs, if you have been involved in drinking alcohol, I invite you today to quit this bad habit and to ask Allah to forgive you. He will definitely forgive you if you have sought that forgiveness truly and sincerely. How long are you going to continue in your bad ways when Allah says your days are numbered? If you look at your heart, and you put your hand on your heart, it pumps between 100 and 140,000 beats a day. If you were to pay one small portion of a cent for each time your heart pumped, you would become bankrupt the first day in the case of most of us. But through Allah's mercy, He gives us the heartbeat. And we should remember every heartbeat is one heartbeat less from the point of your death. It will stop one day. If you take a moment and put your hand on your heart and you feel it pumping, you will definitely be able to realize the gift of Allah. There is no battery in this organ, yet it pumps before life was pumped into your body or blown into you, that particular body. We know that in the womb of a mother, at 120 days is when life is blown in, although the blood and the heart begins to pump very early in the pregnancy or in that phase where the fetus is growing. The heart will be pumping as a muscle, but not as an individual who is alive, whose heart is pumping, because life, according to us, is blown at 120 days. No battery, it keeps pumping. This is the qudra, the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That same Allah who will cause it to stop, Wallahi, He will cause it to stop one day in my case and in your case. The losers are those who used to run behind this world in order to earn in a wrong way, in order to enjoy in a wrong way. When they die, they will never be able to enjoy thereafter. Allah says, do you want a relationship with the opposite sex? If you do, do it the proper way. Would you like, for example, to achieve something? If you would like to, do it the proper way. If there is no proper way of achieving it, then do not achieve it. For example, if a person wants the, the correct way of drinking alcohol, there is no correct way. Because just like consuming that which is filthy and dirty, that which may not be halal for us, we know that we are not allowed to consume it. There is no way to make halal a pig. No matter how many times one might say Bismillah when he is trying to take the life away of that pig, it will never be considered halal. So Allah says, what is the aim behind this? If it is to eat, then Allah says, Ya mimma fil ardi O you, O people, Consume from that which we have provided for you on the earth, which is pure and halal, good and pure in order to consume. So you know, if I want to eat, I have that which is halal. I have that which I have earned in a correct manner, even if it means vegetables. No problem. We thank Allah. The same applies if you want a relationship with the opposite sex, get married. My brothers and sisters, I invite you to make it easy for your sons and daughters to get married. If you make it easy for your sons and daughters to get married, you will get Jannah to Firdaus. Allah will give you Jannah. Why? The reason is you made it easy for them to do halal and to abstain from haram, from sin. Many times it's very easy to sin. 
Someone wants to commit adultery, fornication, someone wants to engage in what we term zina. It's very easy, very simple to do haram. Why is it that we make it difficult to do halal? Why is it that we hold back? Why do we become people who hold barriers? This one is from this tribe and that one is from the north and this one is from the south. In many countries, this is happening where people are looking at so many factors that Islam did not look at. If you would like Jannah, make it easy for people to engage in halal. If you were to give a lift to someone coming to the masjid, you will get a full reward of their prayer when they pray in the masjid because you helped them. You helped them to do that. So in the same way, if you help people to engage in a halal relationship, you will definitely have a very great reward for helping them to do good. And this is why Allah says, وَتَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْبِرِّ وَالتَّقْوَى وَلَا تَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْإِثْمِ وَالْعُدَوَانِ وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهِ Help one another when it comes to, or cooperate with one another, when it comes to that which is good and that which is goodness. Al-bir is righteousness. Al-taqwa is the consciousness of Allah. When there is something good happening, help one another. And do not cooperate when it comes to sin and evil, that which is destructive, that which earns the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my brothers and sisters, my message for you today is to prepare for the grave. Prepare for the day that we are going to leave this world. People have left before us. People are leaving today. I'm sure thousands of people, if not more, across the globe have lost their lives. Some of them unnecessarily due to war and due to the doings of man. And some of them we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy upon them and upon all of us. Amen. So my brothers and sisters, what we need to know is on earth we have a mission. That mission is to please Allah, to fulfill your prayer. My brothers and sisters, if you are lazy to involve in salah, I would like to tell you that the first thing that you will be taken account of when you pass away is your salah. If that prayer is in order, everything else will be in order. If the prayer is not in order, nothing else is going to be in order. Just like if you have a bank account, in order to open it, you need your identification document and you need various other things. Once the account is open, whatever money you deposit in that account shall help you shall help you. But if you don't have an account or if you have deposited in the, in the wrong number, even if that number was wrong by one digit, the money will go elsewhere. Some of us do a lot of good deeds, but our salah is not in order. I invite you and myself to become more regular with your salah. Get up in the morning for the sake of Allah. He will have mercy upon you. Pray for the sake of Allah. He will have mercy upon you. Seek from Allah. Ask goodness, not just for yourself. Ask for others as well. My brothers and sisters, we have a problem whereby we become so selfish when it comes to prayer that we only ask goodness for ourselves. We say, Oh Allah, give me. Oh Allah, grant me. Oh Allah, help me. Oh Allah, make me this. And oh Allah, make me that. But we forget to pray for our neighbors. We forget to pray to those, uh, for those who are suffering. We forget to pray for our neighbors and for those who are suffering across the globe, no matter where they are. And you need to know, كَانَ اللَّهُ فِي عَوْنِ الْعَبْدِ مَا كَانَ الْعَبْدُ فِي عَوْنِ أَخِيهِ Allah will continue to help a worshipper for as long as that worshipper continues to help another. We need to know this. So if you want, you pray for others and the angels will pray the same prayer for you. When you want goodness, say, Oh Allah, my brother who is my neighbor is suffering. Give him good health. The angels will say, Oh Allah, this one who is asking, give him good health too. Which prayer is better, yours for yourself or the prayer of the angels for you? If you want the prayer of the angels, you pray for others. If you want your own prayer for yourself, you pray for yourself, subhanallah. Now, one might be thinking, are we allowed then to pray for ourselves? The answer is yes, you must pray for yourselves. But the point being raised is do not forget other people as well, because it shows that you are concerned about the welfare of your brothers and sisters across the globe. I am st here today in this beautiful country of Sierra Leone, in Freetown. And I pray from this 
sacred pulpit in this house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant alleviation to all of those who were affected by the floods and the mudslides. May Allah grant them alleviation from their suffering. May Allah open their doors. May Allah grant them recompense those who've lost their loved ones. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have rahmah on those. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My brothers and sisters, we reach out to people. We are taught by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that to reach out to a cat and to reach out to a dog will earn you the forgiveness of Allah. To reach out to an animal will earn you the forgiveness of Allah. If you are to be kind to any animal, Allah will give you a reward. If you are to feed a, an animal, Allah will give you a reward. What do you think the reward will be if you were to feed a fellow human being? Subhanallah. Subhanallah. My brothers and sisters, Never let someone mispreach, misquote, misinterpret Islam for you. Islam teaches us that we should be kind to all human beings, irrespective of their faith, their inclinations, etc. We are kind to everyone. We will reach out to them in the most beautiful way. We will respect their rights and we will fulfill the rights that they have upon us. Remember this. My brothers and sisters, we reach out to all and we make sure that when they see us, they have a clear picture of who Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was. They have a clearer picture of what Allah has asked us to do. Many people think that we need to go out and harm those who don't agree exactly with our own ideas. If that was the case, there would have been bloodshed from day one and Islam would never have spread. For your information, Islam has spread through the good nature of the businessmen and the traders and those who came, they intermarried and they taught, they were honest, they were upright and they were seen to be praying, they were seen so clean, they were seen in such a beautiful way that the people began to ask, what is this all about? I want to also be a part of this. They were then invited in the most beautiful way. That is why today we are seated here in this masjid very, very far from Arabia, in our thousands. Yet, there was no internet at the time of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There were no telephones. There was not even a loud hailer. Today, as I entered the masjid, they told me something has gone wrong with the sound. And I said, Wallahi, we are Muslimin. We are Muslimin. In Makkah al you can have two million Muslims doing different things. In 50 seconds, those two million Muslims will be so silent that you can hear a pin drop and they will come together standing according to their sufuf and their lines of salah facing the qibla ready for Allahu Akbar in 50 seconds of iqama or takbir. And therefore, we will be able to speak with everyone hearing what I'm saying even without that microphone because of the mercy of Allah upon the Muslimin, we are prepared for pin drop silence as we see right now. May Allah have mercy on us. Amen. Subhanallah. I thank Allah for this miracle. It is only the Muslimin, no matter what we are doing, Wallahi, in 50 seconds, we can actually all be exactly where we are supposed to be. And therefore, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us forgiveness. It is my duty. It is my duty to inform you and to advise you that we worship Allah and Allah alone. We don't worship a man. We don't worship a human. We don't worship that perhaps which. We don't worship a human. We don't worship those deities besides Allah. We worship our maker alone. And we need to know this and realize this. My brothers and sisters, yes, there is excitement today, subhanallah. There is a lot of excitement, but your gratitude should be focused at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
you should be getting excited about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. قُلْ بِفَضْلِ اللَّهِ وَبِرَحْمَتِهِ فَبِذَلِكَ فَلْيَفْرَحُوا هُوَ خَيْرٌ مِمَّا يَجْمَعُونَ Tell them, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, بِفَضْلِ اللَّهِ وَبِرَحْمَتِهِ The mercy of Allah, the virtue of Allah, you are mu'mineen, that is what should make you happy. You are believers in Allah, it is the relationship with Allah. The time of Fajr when the Mu'addin calls out, As-salatu khayrun minan naum. We should be so excited to get up and to go and meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then we are true muslimin wallahi. What is the point of getting excited when a man comes to you from Zimbabwe in a way that we leave Fajr, we leave Dhuhr, we leave Asr, we leave Maghrib, we leave Isha, and then we claim we were happy on this day. That is a day of sadness. That is not a day of happiness. Allah is the one to be glorified. Allah is the one to be worshipped. I can do nothing for you. If my message was not from Allah and His Messenger, you, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you would not want to listen to what I have to say. But because I have a message of Allah and Allah alone, and that message shall be carried by others, and not just me, and when I am gone, it will be carried by so many others, there might be a time when no one on earth would know me, but they will continue to know Allah and His Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How many of you know people who lived in your community 200 years ago? I don't think you would know many. And how many of you know people who lived in Sierra Leone 500 years ago? I don't think you would know many. It goes to show al Lillah. That which remains is Allah alone. Subhanallah. Today we have a message. It is the message that is powerful. Remember, it is the message that holds weight. May Allah have mercy on us. So it is my duty to let you know, contain the excitement. Let that excitement be focused upon salah. When you read Dhuhr with Jama'ah, you should be very excited. You should be jumping in joy. You have done something great. When you read Salat al Asr, when your day passes and you have fulfilled all five salah for Allah, that is the day you have to rejoice. It is the day of Eid. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. So, my brothers and sisters, I ask you and I ask myself, let us prepare for Jannatul Firdaus. I want to see you in Jannatul Firdaus, and I'm sure you want to see me there. I have no guarantee whether I am going to go there or not, besides the hope in the mercy of Allah. And the same applies to every one of you. I ask Allah, O oh Allah, through your mercy, grant us Jannah. O oh Allah, through your mercy, grant us goodness in the dunya and the akhirah. O oh Allah, we ask you to make us true followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. O oh Allah, help those who are sick and ill. O oh Allah, have mercy upon those who have passed away. O oh Allah, grant us growth and goodness. My brothers and sisters, right now as I'm speaking, there are people across the globe who are struggling. There are people who don't have homes. There are people being driven out of their homes. Look at our brothers and sisters in Rohingya, in Burma. They are being cleansed in such ethnic cleansing that has seen none before it in recent history. We ask Allah to help them. May Allah help them. May Allah grant them ease. We are sitting far away. Each one of us has our own problems, but we are created in such a way that we will still look at the problems of others and try and help them because that is how Allah will help us. So I call upon you to pray for those who are struggling, not only in Rohingya, if I have to begin to take names, the list is endless. You know, the Muslim Ummah is struggling. My brothers and sisters, correct your relationship with Allah. Stop your sins. How long are you going to wait for? How many more messages would you like before you would be able to change your ways? We cannot continue forever. Let us become better people. Let us promise Allah today. In this beautiful house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, O oh Allah, whatever sins we have done in the past, wipe them out, forgive us. We are starting today a new life, a new beginning. We will not sin again, Ya Allah. Ilaha al-alameen, we ask you goodness, have mercy on all of us. My brothers and sisters, let us understand that the teachings of Islam are great. The teachings of Islam are vast. 
we need to make an effort to learn these teachings. And so you need to promise that you will learn. You will learn the goodness with the idea of putting it into practice and conveying it to others. Imagine today we are seated here, very far away from the Middle East, where Muhammad sallallahu was. Someone learned the deen. They were known as Sahaba. They put it into practice. They conveyed it to the Tabi'een. They learned it. They put it into practice, conveyed it to the Tabi'een. They learned it. They put it into practice, conveyed it to the next generation, and so on. Until today, we are sitting in this beautiful house of Allah. People would never imagine that far off in Sierra Leone, there are so many followers of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Learn to love one another and learn to care for humanity. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'ani wa sunnah wa nafa'ani wa iyaakum bima fihima min al-ayati wal hikmah. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfiru Allah li wa lakum wa lisa'iri al-muslimin fa astaghfiruhu innahu huwa al-ghafoor al-rahim.